Hey folks, this is Scott with SimpleSpider.com. Today we'll be installing CentOS 7 on Oracle VirtualBox. So you see here I've already got my VirtualBox Manager started up. I'm going to go ahead and click New and type in my name for this instance, CentOS 7 64-bit base. And it's automatically come up with Linux and version of Red Hat 64-bit. That's correct. I'm going to go ahead and say Next and I'm going to set my memory configuration to 4 gigs of memory and it says do I want to create a virtual hard drive now I'm going to say go ahead and create that drive it's going to say what kind of drive do I want I'm going to choose VirtualBox disk image and say next I'm going to say dynamically allocate which will add the space as I need it not allocate all the space at once and I'm going to go ahead and say next I'm going to go ahead and create the disk space as 50 gigs in size and click create and it's going to go ahead and create my instance I'm going to right click on it and choose settings and here I'm going to say how many processors do I want in my system configuration under processor tab I'm going to go ahead and choose two processors for this instance I can change this at any time uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and click storage and I'm going to remove the default CD-ROM drive and I'm going to go ahead and add in the ISO that I've already downloaded so I'm going to go here and I'm going to choose the ISO that I've downloaded here uh, the minimal install ISO. I'm going to come in here to network and I'm going to change it from NAT to bridge. You can cho choose either of these settings. Uh, when you're first starting out, there's nothing wrong with the NAT configuration. I'm going to use bridge since I have a DHCP server up and running. I'm going to go ahead and choose bridge and it'll be on the same network as everything else. And I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and start this instance. And it's going to say, what do I want to do? Do I want to install CentOS? And yes, I want to install CentOS. Now we're going to go ahead and skip the disk uh, file system check. From here, it's going to pop up a screen to choose which language I want to use, and this is correct for me. I'm going to go ahead and say continue. Now it's going to come up with a basic screen on uh, what my configurations are. My time zone is correct for me. The keyboard is correct for me. The language support is correct. Uh, the software is, cor is correct. The minimal install is what I'm looking for. It's asking me to go ahead and choose this information here which uh, is which drive do I want to stick it on, which is this drive. I'm going to let it automatically configure the partitioning, which is going to default to uh, 4 gigs of swap and 46 gigs of disk and a boot partition. I'm going to go ahead and say done here. And I'm going to go into the network settings and go ahead and give this a default name. I'll use this instance to copy from my other instances so I don't have to reinstall. I'm also going to turn this device on, the Ethernet device on, so it'll automatically get a network connection. And I'm going to say done. And then I'm going to go ahead and begin the installation. While the installation starts, there's a couple other configurations I can make. I can make a create user accounts at this point in time. I'm not going to do that. I normally script that out, but I am going to set my root password at this time. And I'm going to set this as a strong password since this is my administrative password. And I'm going to go ahead and say done here. And it shows that it's going to install 297 packages for the minimal install. And it's about a third of the way through the installation already. The CentOS 7 installation is a little bit easier, or a little bit faster, I should say, than the other installations, with ha which had a few more screens, which were broke down a little bit more, that asked you uh, in a wizard format each of the questions that we answered basically on the first two screens. They would walk you through each of those steps and say, check this, check this, check this, whereas this just says, here is what we've decided is the default, or the most common configurations, and we've set them. Uh, and these are the most common ones and the ones that we'll use for our installation. You can see here as it's going through and installing our packages, you can see the packages that it's installed. And then there'll be a couple steps after it completes its installation that it'll do to finish up. And then it'll ask us just to reboot the system.
okay now it says it's complete read the end user license tells you where that's at and it says go ahead and reboot and we'll go ahead and just reboot and we can see here that it has two disk images one for the recovery disk and one for the regular disk the startup disk and we'll go ahead and start into the main image Alright, type in our password here. And we'll check to make sure that our IP is set. So here we can see I've got an IP address 192.168.1.130, which is my network. And we'll do a yum list just to make sure our package configuration is set up. And here we can see our package configuration, the repositories are set up, and that we're all set. So this is the end of the installation. Of course, there's some post-installation tasks or the tasks that you need to do your application. If you're uh, following along with one of the tutorials, uh, you'll want to go back to the tutorial and follow, once again follow along with the rest of the steps for your tutorial. Okay, thanks. Bye.